Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we will be reviewing the Abel Salinas Wash Processed Ecuador from Counterculture Coffee. And there's the box right there. And Counterculture, based out of Durham, North Carolina. And this coffee is our December 2023 Coffee of the Month, as it was voted on by you guys as the coffee you most want to see us review. This is also surprisingly our first ever full review of one of Counterculture's coffees. And the reason that's so surprising is because of the influence they've had on the modern American coffee scene. But the main reason they haven't featured before is because it felt like they prioritized mass production over catering to people like myself. And that's why I was so surprised to see this coffee among their offerings as it is a very trendy variety from a well-respected producer. And that felt like the perfect opportunity to finally review them definitely looking forward to discussing this one is this right here is day 35. And recipe we went with for this one was actually every recipe we went with worked pretty well but the one we're going to say for this video is their recipe which is a 17 to 1 water to coffee ratio brewed at 90 degrees celsius about 195 degrees fahrenheit and i like this one best through the v60 which indicates a more medium fine grind Roast profile for this one. So according to their spectrum, this is about as light as they go. And I was surprised by how light this coffee was relative to so many of the other coffees I've had from Counterculture in the past, as I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a very light coffee or even light by most people's standards and metrics, but I would say that it's lighter than you might expect and it's on the lighter side of that medium light in terms of the roast profile. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 11, first impression, and I felt like it was even warranted to start this coffee earlier than normal as I expected it to be a little bit more developed than it turned out to be, but we ran it through the V60 and the sweetness was immediately notable as it offered that in a very clean and prominent sense with a very sugary feel to the cup and also a pronounced tropical fruit aspect. In addition to that, there was a lingering sugariness throughout, and it resulted in a surprisingly great start for this one. Though this coffee is very much my profile and my type of coffee to begin with, so I shouldn't have been as surprised as I was, but I think I was just taken aback as I didn't necessarily expect this from this roaster. Day 14 opted for the Chemex, and it felt a little bit more dialed back. Still very sweet, intense, and clean all around as it offered a strong tropical fruit sweetness in a slightly more citric direction but there's even a bit of stone fruits to complement the wild tropical sweetness as well. So once again, positive second impression. We continue on to day 17 as we opted for the April Brewer and the cup is initially uneven right off brew. However, it improves dramatically on the cool down with the brightness feeling slightly off, skewing a little high in the citric direction, but the interme intermediary is followed well by a defined tropicality before cooling down into a significantly sweet honeyed aspect. Cup in general is extremely sweet throughout, so I'm really enjoying these first couple of impressions. We continue on to day 20, opted for the V60 with Counterculture's recipe. And interestingly, the cup was the best it had been up to this point as it had a strong sugary sweetness that was heavily pronounced yet again. Tremendous tropicality in the sugary sense with more of the well-defined honey, so I'm still enjoying this coffee quite a bit. We continue on to day 23, opted for the Chemex with Counterculture's recipe. And it's still a great cup with plenty of sugary sweet aspects, but once again, it feels like it's ever so slightly dialed back with a tropical fruit, citrus, and listed honey also pronounced yet again, though all in a slightly more toned back sense. And there's a little bit of a honeyed bitterness too, so some drawbacks, and that's why it at least felt early on that I had a strong preference in terms of brewer for this one. Day 26 through the V60 with Counterculture's recipe yet again, and it continues to remain excellent as it's marked by the intense tropical sweetness. Complementary florality remains an ever-present as there's a slight bit of the Mejorado-like sweetness as well, that of course being that brown candied aspect. Day 29, the cup has dropped off ever so slightly as there's a fresh fruit stone fruit present within this one. It can be seen as a bit of peachiness and the tropicality and sweetness both remain pretty high, though the overall intensity of the cup feels ever so slightly dialed back. Cooldown does display a slight bit of development, but it is still made up for by the abundance of clarity and sweetness, so really enjoying that aspect of this one. Day 32 through the V60, and it's another nice day of this coffee, as there's the notable honeyed aspect yet again, in a sweeter but also floral sense, with the bitterness also ever so slightly present. It transitions nicely into the wonderful tropical fruit yet again, with a clean and slight emphasis on the citrus, but still overall pretty nice all around. All right, let's go ahead and put up a tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. 
And we have one level five. So we'll go through that one real quick. And that is the sweetness level five. So yes, this one definitely is justified at that level five mark. And that did take me slightly by surprise. Obviously the big selling point to me on these Mejorado coffees have been that they're very sweet coffees. And this one right here, while I went into it hoping for it to be that sweet, it surprised me by ending up being that sweet. So credit to Counterculture on that one as I wasn't entirely sure if they would get to that level five mark, but this coffee was just extremely sweet. So many sugary aspects that were present within this one. We have a bunch of level fours. Let's start with the cleanliness level four. So I mentioned that right from the start, I was surprised by the immense amount of clarity in this one. I really didn't know what to expect with this coffee, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, my previous experiences with this coffee roaster have been, I would actually say on the more positive side of things, they were in our first ever coffee roaster tier list. And I said that they were the best among the old school coffee roasters. And as a result, I just seemed to have a, I would say, above average expectation and impression of them. But this one right here offering that cleanliness in the sense that it did was a little bit surprising for me, if I'm being completely honest, but very clean coffee. Don't necessarily think I have too much to add to that. Finish, level four. Once again, the finish seems to be very nice in terms of that honeyed sense, but in addition to that, there's a fair bit of sugary sweetness to this one. So right there at the level four, pretty even finish on certain days, especially as well. Florality, level four. So they do have a honey note list on here. That honey florality was definitely an ever present in a slightly bitter sense. But even then, I really enjoyed that part of this coffee as it did feel a little bit like some of the other Mejorado coffees I have had in the past. Berry fruit, level uh, four. Yes, and I'm trying to remember. I think they have something along the lines of a guava as one of their notes listed on here. And for me, I think I just described it as a uh, generic tropicality because I'm not overly familiar with the vast majority of the tropical fruits, but it didn't remind me of anything specifically like a pineapple, a mango, or anything else of that sort. So if they want to say guava, sure, it feels like it uh, best aligns with a tropical berry, at least in this category. So that's why we have it there at that level four mark. Citrus, level four. Once again, as I said, it wasn't necessarily overly akin to something like a pineapple, though there was a tropicality that was present within this. It felt like a more just tropical citrus in general, if not necessarily overly defined in that sense. So level four felt like a good fit for it. Stone fruit, level four. I mentioned pretty early on that there was a little bit of a peachiness to this one. And while it may not have necessarily been as pronounced or prominent as the tropical aspects of it, I feel like it was pronounced enough, at least on certain days and the day we made the tasting well that I said, you know what, I'll justify it. There's also a sugariness to that stone fruit. So I could also see mangoes. So being it there at that level four mark seems to work for me. And that's why all three of those did reach that level four. In addition to that, we have a couple of level threes. We will start with the acidity level three. And that is maybe one of the more expected parts of this coffee, as that felt surprisingly toned down. Though I remember when making this tasting, I wanted to note that it was somewhere between that three and the four. I just couldn't decide where I wanted to put it. But I felt like some of the other Abel Salinas coffees that we're going to be discussing might really seem to differentiate where I want to place this one specifically. And that's why I opted for that level three. But in addition to that, we have the caramel at that level three mark, and that's a little bit more in line with the classic Mejorado brown candied sweetness, though. It also felt a little bit more in that honeyed sweet category, so I can see both things. However, given that there's just a very strong sweetness in general, I felt like that was justified at that level three mark. And then final thing worth discussing is the body at the level two. Maybe that's my biggest surprise of this coffee, as I did expect it to have a slight bit more body than it ended up having, but... Being there at that level too, once again, I think it helps that I was able to compare this coffee alongside another about Selena's coffee, and I felt like that one just seemed to justify putting this coffee at that level too. So as I'm looking at this tasting wheel, I do think it's actually a pretty good representation of what I was getting from this coffee. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. I am kind of lost on what I want to say on it because it turned out so much better than I was necessarily expecting. And I'm very happy that it won our coffee of the month poll because I imagined that this one was going to easily be my favorite of the coffees that were nominated as it was the most my type of coffee. And then it ended up turning out to be very much my type of coffee. And that's why I'm a little bit at a loss because I guess don't judge a book by its cover. Counterculture can still release some very nice coffees as once upon a time, I was a big fan of their coffee and I feel like it just kind of changed when they got bigger, but that's to say that they can still release good coffees from time to time. This felt like it came out of nowhere. 
but it still seems like they at least have a pretty solid grasp and idea of what they're doing in terms of their coffees as this one right here offered all the things i was looking for great clarity tremendous sweetness a florality and a fruitiness so the big categories that really seemed important to me in addition to that it came with a very trendy coffee that this right here i feel like is going to appeal to a lot of people there's a reason a lot of other notable american coffee roasters have started carrying about salinas's coffees at least the mejorado one specifically so you're going to see more of those coffees here in the near future and it's going to be interesting com to compare and contrast this one alongside of those ones as well but as far as this goes this is one of my favorite coffees we've had at the start of this year i felt like it was very well done and executed by the producer as well as the coffee roaster type of person i would suggest this coffee to at the time of recording this coffee is still available and i have a feeling the reason it's still available is a lot of people probably wouldn't expect counterculture to carry something like this but if you're the same type of coffee drinker that i am that seems to prioritize and emphasize a lot of the sweeter aspects of the coffee this one right here is a great starting point because it has such wonderful sweetness and a little bit more in that tropical sense but it does offer plenty of depth as it's not overly one-dimensional you're experiencing a fair bit of the sweeter components in a number of different characteristics the florality the fruitiness even a little bit of that kind of brown candy sort of sweetness while still offering great clarity and while it's not an uber light coffee it's still surprisingly lighter than i think a lot of people might expect from a coffee roaster like this so massive credit to everybody involved in this one i felt like this was just pretty well done i think for the most part i'll leave this review at that if you by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee would love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well if you're enjoying the content give this video a like subscribe if you're not already subscribed this right here has been a review of the Abel Salinas Wash Processed Ecuador from Counterculture Coffee. Thank you for watching.